Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the last video before Christmas. It's the video for Game Week 18 for the 5% series. The idea being if you follow these instructions exactly, you're hopefully finishing the top 5% globally, which means you'll do all right in your mini league. Now I know a lot of people like to watch this and just use it as a guide, and that's absolutely fine. So whatever you get out of this video, that's nice. <laughs> and there's normally chapters at the bottom, so if you want to skip along and just go to the parts that you want to see, that's fine as well. All right, let's get into it. And game se week 17 hasn't technically finished yet because we still don't know what's happening with the Bournemouth Luton points. But hey ho, we've got to carry on anyway. Hey ho, I should have said ho ho, shouldn't I? We start by looking what the players have scored for game week 17, the players that are within this system. And this week, unusually, the defensive side did quite well and the attacking side not so good. And obviously you'd expect that to happen if the attackers aren't so good, defenders are better. It kind of makes sense. So for the keepers, the expensive pager keepers, look at that. Three of them did all right. And then for the cheaper keepers, one of them was okay. The more expensive defenders, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. That's a nice pretty pattern there. Trippier, of course, was suspended. And then the slightly cheaper defenders, or very much cheaper defenders, uh, a 7, a 6 and a 5. And then the cheapest defenders, we even got a six in there. So that's nice. The expensive midfielders, only Bowen got something. That was eight points. Cheaper midfielders, six, six and five. Gordon was marked as potentially not playing, but he did manage to get some points anyway. But he's potentially injured again now, so we don't know what's happening with him. We'll look at him later. And then the cheapest midfielders, look at that. Palmer got 14. Palmer is a real steal because he's so cheap. If you've not got him in your team... He's absolutely worth getting at the moment. And then the forwards, Jesus 9, Watkins 9, Solanke 6. They're the expensive forwards. And then there's cheaper forwards, Adibayo 5. So looking at the goalkeepers for the coming week, Edison, he's not playing. Raya away to Liverpool. Leno, new entry, the Fulham keeper. With any of the keepers, you just can't really tell when they're going to keep a clean sheet. Leno has kept a few clean sheets. Home to Burnley this week. He's all right if you want a different keeper. And he's certainly quite popular. Onana, Man United are so hit and miss. They did very well to keep a clean sheet at Anfield. So I would expect them to go to West Ham and let in several goals because that's the way it goes. If a team does better than normal one week, better than their average, they do tend to, I think, go below the average the following week. And then Sanchez is injured. I doubt any of you have got him, but if you do have him, he's absolutely sellable. But if you want to keep hold of him because you have another keeper, that's fine. Hopefully he'll be back in five or so game weeks. Johnston, we don't know how long he's out for. I've tried to find out, but I can't get a solid answer. But he's terrible. And at 4.6, there are certainly better keepers, I think, than him. Flecken not playing this week. Pickford, away to Tottenham. So Everton have, I think, kept clean sheets the last four games, four premiership games. But that in no way means they're going to keep a clean sheet at Tottenham or Man City. But... Pickford's okay. For the cheaper keepers, Dubravka at 4.2 is still a very good buy. There's always a risk that he's going to get dropped in three or four game weeks time if Newcastle get another keeper because Pope's out for a few months. But if they don't do that, then he's certainly a very good buy. And for 4.2, it does release money to spend elsewhere. Ariola West Ham, he was on the bench last game, but he's coming back from an injury. We don't know if he's going to be first choice or not. So a little bit dodgy. And the next three games are against United, Arsenal, Brighton, all of whom tend to score goals. Turner. So if Nottingham Forest have got a new manager. We don't know if Turner's going to be playing or not. But at 3.9, he's nice and cheap. So it may be if you had Dubravka and Turner, 4.2, 3.9, you'll hopefully better get a keeper out for the next several weeks at least. Regarding the defenders, Trent is still a good buy, even though they're home to Arsenal. Don't worry about the clean sheets. He's always got a chance of getting an attacking return. So 8.2, I think he's all right. As good as midfielders around that price. Trippier, 6.9. I've not made him green because he has made a few mistakes recently. He does look knackered. And even though the next two games are good, away to Luton, home to Forest, mm, we don't know. If you've got him, I'd absolutely keep him. And he's fine to buy. He's just not quite making green at the moment for me. And then White and Saliba, two Arsenal defenders. They have got some nice fixtures coming up, but the next one is away to Liverpool. Could be a nil-nil, could be a one-nil either way. So um, 
I probably wouldn't buy them this week if I didn't already have them. But if if you need to get a defender in and you're not going to do any defender moves in the next few weeks, now's an all right week to get them in because at least you've then got them. Poro, he's still green. Nice attacking defender. Anderson, absolutely sellable for Crystal Palace. And Gabriel, another Arsenal defender. So any of those three Arsenal defenders are okay. Saliba's probably the one to get if you're going to get one of those. And I'm aware I've not got Zinchenko in this system. The reason for that is I've tried to keep the number of players in the system low, but it does mean there are some good players that aren't in the system. But that's fine. Otherwise, we just end up having 100 players in the system because at some point in the season, all 100 players seem to be all right. And by keeping the choice of players low, it will hopefully be easier to manage your teams. And we're only going for top 5%, so we should still be able to manage that. The cheaper defenders... Simicast is sellable soon, so no need to sell him now, but Robertson should be back, I don't know, two, three, four game weeks time, at which time we'd expect Simicast to stop playing. So he will be getting sold soon out of the system, assuming Robertson comes back and stays fit. But no need to sell him just now. But you can if you want to. But if you're wildcarding now, I wouldn't get him in. And if you're looking to bring in a defender, don't bring in Simicast. The Kanji sellable. It's hard to know whoever Man City are going to play. And of course, they're not even playing this week anyway. Udogi, I've marked him as orange just to say don't buy in this game week because he's not playing. He's suspended. Cash, he's just not getting the 90 minutes. They do have a nice fixture this week at home to Sheffield United. Is he going to play? We don't know. If he does, he may well keep a clean sheet, may get attacking returns. Or he may come on for a cameo and get like one point. So he is absolutely sellable. And after this week, certainly after the Burnley game, we'll probably kick him out of the system anyway. Unless he starts playing a lot. Pinnock's not playing this week. Colwell, still nice and cheap. Still seems to be playing 90 minutes a week for Chelsea. Chelsea have some nice fixtures coming up. Absolutely worth having if you want to be saving some money somewhere. Consa, new entry. So I was going to do Paul Torres for Aston Villa. But he may have a knock and may not be playing. I didn't want to put a player into the system that then isn't even going to play. So I've put Condren instead. He's a little bit cheaper, but clean sheet potential this game weekend in two game weeks time. If you want another cheap defender to save money for elsewhere in the system, Condren's perfectly okay. And then the cheapest defenders, Sanessi we still got in there. Maguire, he's currently injured. Don't know when he's going to be back, but he's kind of bench fodder anyway. So... If you've got him, he's okay to keep because he's cheap and he sits on your bench. But if you want to swap him out for someone else, that's okay as well. LaSalle's bench fodder. He's probably not going to get so many games going forward because the injured Newcastle defenders are coming back now. Kabore, just another cheap bit of bench fodder. Regarding the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, Salah will be sellable soon. So I think he's got Arsenal, Burnley, Newcastle. But then he is off to the African Cup of Nations. He could be missing one game week. It could be out for five game weeks. Most engaged managers who have Salah will be selling him. So if you're wild carding or getting players in now, you could get him in, but you need to be aware in three, four weeks time, you're probably going to be selling him. Same with Sun. Uh, very good player. Both of those could well get some good scores in the next three game weeks, but we may be selling them in about four game weeks time. Saka ticking over nicely away to Liverpool may not do much this week but perfectly okay player Odegaard perfectly good Fernandez plays for United apart from that he's a good player you could move him on if you like I've not made him orange because at any time he could do well here's the main engine room for United I think I think he's all right there are better midfielders you could easily pick five better midfielders to have than Fernandez. But if you've got him and you've got other situations to sort out, he's fine to have. Bowen, he's still doing well. Home to Man United this week. Be interesting to see. Very interesting to see what happens there. Martinelli, he's all right. Ticking along okay. The cheaper midfielders, Foden not playing this week, but they are coming into some nice fixtures. So I'm not suggesting we sell him. We just hold on to him if you've got him. Sterling got some nice fixtures. Diaby's not getting the minutes, which is a shame because if he was, he'd be a very good player to have. But at home to Sheffield United now and in three weeks' time at home to Burnley, he may get some game time, may get something, but he's fine to move on if you want to swap him out. Richarlison, a new entry there. So if you wanted to swap Diaby for Richarlison, that's fine. 
Of course, Sun's going away in three weeks' time, which may affect the service Richarlison gets, but he does seem to be the number one strike at the moment at Tottenham. Tottenham's ethos seems to be just attack. If you're winning, losing or drawing, just attack. So he should be getting plenty of chances to get goals. Uh, we need to see what he's like, but he's done all right the last couple of weeks and the weeks that he has played, he's generally done okay. So he's all right. Mitama, he's sellable soon. He's perfectly good now. He's got Palace, Tottenham, West Ham, but then he's off to Japan for the Asian Cup. Uh, but at only 6.5, we won't necessarily be selling him, but we may want to. Gordon, he's not green because he's flagged as injured. He got a knock last night. I think it was last night in the uh, in the game. So, uh, yeah, not green. We don't know if he's going to play. And he's not so good away from home anyway in the next game to way to Luton. Ward Prowse, quite expensive for what he gives us, but he does occasionally get something. There are easily five better midfielders than Ward Prowse in the system, though. The cheapest midfielders, he Chan. Now, he's off in three weeks' time, three or four weeks' time, but I've not made him blue because he's so cheap, he's kind of almost into bench fodder territory now. So he could easily go on your bench if you've got him for a few weeks, if you wanted to. There's no point to spend four points effectively transferring him out and then potentially transferring him back in again. Gibbs White, he's sellable soon. I've said that because they've got a new manager. We need to see how Frost are going to be playing. He may be excellent, so I wouldn't sell him now. I'm just warning you, we may be offloading him soon. And if you're wildcarding, I wouldn't bring him in. And if you're just moving players about, I wouldn't bring him in. But I wouldn't be desperate to sell him just now either. Palmer, 5.6. Still a very good player to have. Perfectly good player to bring in, nice and cheap. Neto, 4.6. He's still not back from injury, but he's very cheap. If you still have him, I don't know if any of you do, he could just sit on your bench. Nakamba, he's sellable because he hardly ever plays. I know Neto doesn't, but Neto will be playing in a couple of weeks' time, hopefully. So Haaland, he's totally sellable. He's not playing this week, and there's now a lot of doubt whether he's going to play the Everton game, and then he might still be out for the Sheffield United game. Now, I've not had Haaland for a few weeks, but if I had him, I think I would definitely sell him this week and just accept I may need to spend four, another four points in a few weeks time to get him back but I would sell him and use those funds elsewhere so even though I said don't necessarily bring in Salah or Son if you've got Haaland I think it's worth selling Haaland and then bringing in Salah or Son or maybe Richarlison I know it's a different position so you sell Haaland and a midfielder for one of those players I just said and then get a forward and we'll look at the rest of the forwards just now Watkins, he's worth having. He's ticking along nicely. Jesus, he's good. I'd be perfectly comfortable owning Jesus. Arsenal has some nice fixtures coming up. Darwin, okay, he's a, he's a lot of fun. And he's even more fun when you don't own him. So he's completely sellable. I'm aware some people like to keep him because they've got the word Darwin in their team name. But you don't have to hold on to a player just because he's in your team name. Alvarez not playing this week, but if Haaland's out, Alvarez might be worth having going forward. We need to see and hope to get some news about what's happening with Haaland. Solanke, still a good buy, only 6.8. Got some nice fixtures coming up for us and Fulham the next two. And then the cheaper forwards, Vissa, he's off to African Cup of Nations soon and he's not playing this week. If you happen to have him, he's fine to sell. And then Yao Pedro, just bench fodder as is Morris, as is Adibayo, as is Archer. Regarding the bench order and the captaincy, I'm going to make suggestions, but you do whatever you like. With the bench, what we try and do is if we get the bench correct, the rest of the team sort themselves out. So I'm now going to go through the goalkeepers. The first goalkeeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting, goes on your bench. So if you have any of Flecken, Johnson, Sanchez or Edison, none of them are playing this week, put them on your bench. If you have two of these players... I would be tempted to make a transfer and get in a playing keeper. If you don't have any of those, but you have Ariola, I suggest he goes on your bench. If you don't have him, but you have Turner, I suggest he goes on your bench. After that, it'd be rare for Arsenal because they're away to Liverpool. Then Pickford's away to Tottenham. Now, I'm expecting Tottenham to pepper the goal that Pickford's in. Peter Piper picked a peck. So... There should be a chance for Pickford to make lots of saves. And I think for every three saves he makes, he gets another point. So he could let in one or two goals and still get a half-decent score. And then Onana away to West Ham. I've put Onana above Pickford, but it's quite close. 
and then Dubravka, possibly the first chance of a clean sheet here on the page, the first reasonable chance. They're away to Luton. And then Leno, at home to Burnley, probably the best chance of a clean sheet this week out of the keepers we have. Regarding the other players, what I'm suggesting is the first player I show you that you see goes to position three on your bench, the next player position two, the last player position one. I'm not showing the players that we know are definitely out, like Brentford and Man City players and suspended players. And I'm not showing players that you'll definitely be playing, like Saka, Son, Salah. So I'm suggesting if you've got Maguire, he shouldn't be playing this week. But you never know. There's a remote chance. But last reports I've seen, he's expected to be missing this week. So if you've got him, he's on your bench. Then Nakamba, Morris, Cabore, Jao Pedro, Archer, Adibayo, Anderson, Senesi, Diaby, because we don't know what his minutes are going to be, Gibbs White, Ward Prowse, and then we're going to get to slightly better players now, Mitama, Colwell, Lascelles, hopefully Lascelles is going to play, Cash, see I've put Cash above Lascelles because if Cash happens to get well over 60 minutes and they keep a clean sheet, he may get an attacking return, but he's fine to put on your bench, this is just the order I'm suggesting here, Simicast for Liverpool, I'm not expecting Liverpool to keep a clean sheet, and then we got three Arsenal defenders, White, Gabriel, Saliba. I'm suggesting that order this week. If you have two Arsenal defenders, it's fine to put one of them a bit further down the list. So, for example, if I had two Arsenal defenders and Simicast, I'd play one Arsenal defender, probably Saliba and Simicast, just to even out the chances of getting a clean sheet from one of them. Then Martinelli, so attacking players here, slightly higher than defenders. He Chan... So Wolves are at home to Chelsea. Chelsea do leak goals. He Chan's got a reasonable chance of being involved. Darwin, a lot of fun, especially if you don't own him. Konsa, new entry there, reasonable chance of a clean sheet. Then Odegaard, Jesus, Solanke, Bowen, Gordon, Sterling. Now with Gordon, hopefully he'll be play. He'll either play and be fit, or else not come on at all. What would be a shame if, is if he starts on the bench and then comes on for a few minutes and gets you one point. So if he's still flagged when you set your team, you may want to put Gordon further down the list. And as with every week, if by the time you look at doing your team, one or two of these players are flagged, feel free to put them further down the pecking order. If you don't see a player here, it's either because they're not playing this week at all or else they will be in your starting eleven. Regarding captaincy... OK, we've got a little bit of a choice this week. This is my suggestions. I suggest if you have Watkins, he's a good choice to wear the old mule hat this week. Other good captain choices would be Son and Salah, simply because Salah's at home, even though he's against Arsenal, he could well get something. Tottenham are at home to Everton. They like attacking. Watkins at home to Sheffield United. Any of those three are good captaincy choices. I'm probably going to go for Watkins. But Sun and Salah will also be popular. If you want to go somewhere else, you could go for Palmer, away to Wolves. He's involved in a lot of their goals. Richarlison, another Tottenham player at home to Everton. Or even Bowen, at home to Man United. Man United did keep a clean sheet against Liverpool last week. But because they overperformed defensively this week, I think they might underperform. So if you can, I'd suggest you put captaincy on one of these, vice-captain on another... But don't choose Sun and Richarlison just in case something happens to the game. If you haven't got two of these, my suggestion would be go for one or two of the green players we saw earlier. And regarding the background picture, hopefully it's just a harmless, festive picture. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that made sense. And this game week ends, this coming game week ends on Christmas Eve. There's a game. And then the next game for the next game week is on Boxing Day, which means if I put another video out I'm going to have to do it on Christmas Day so watch this space I might do I might not I don't know if I don't put a video out then you can probably just play the team that you've got as you see them at the moment uh, but maybe I'll try and put a video out let's see what happens <laughs> all right thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice few days off work hopefully most of you get some time off work thanks bye